We love talking about great guns in video games, but what gets less attention are the crappy ones. Hi folks, it's Falcon, and today on Game Ranks, the 10 worst guns in video games. Starting off at number 10, it's the Water Pistol from Metal Gear Solid 5. You can develop a lot of weapons and gadgets in MGS5 at Mother Base, and a lot of that stuff can be pretty useful. But I'm guessing a ton of people out there just straight up pass this thing right by. Why? Well, it's a water pistol. It's literally just a squirt gun. It shoots water. It doesn't do any damage at all, so it's an absolutely terrible gun. As a gadget, though, it's honestly not that bad. You can put out fires with it. You can use it to distract guns. You can stun enemies by shooting them in the face. It's even kind of useful against certain bosses. And most importantly, it can short out electrical equipment too, which can be pretty handy. So it's not completely useless in the final assessment here. Many of its functions are situational at best, sure, and most can be solved with the standard silenced tranquilizer pistol as well. But this is one weapon that is utterly useless as an actual weapon, but not terrible when it's used for other purposes. Still, it's mostly seen as a joke because basically that's what it is. So we're putting it on this list at least to start off. It's gonna get a lot worse from here though. And number nine is the Calibri from Battlefield 1. Uh, check this out, just right as a visual here. It's ridiculous looking. Uh, it looks like a toy, and it's about as dangerous as a toy too. You can unlock it at level 10 from the scout kit, so it's something you have to put some work in to get, but don't let that fool you. It is exactly as weak as it looks. It literally takes multiple headshots to kill somebody at point blank range with this thing. And that fire rate isn't me firing slow on purpose. That is how slow it is to fire. It is weak as hell, it's incredibly inaccurate, and the fire rate is that bad. It's an all around awful gun, useful only as a weapon to troll your enemies with. Like, all right, let's say you want to embarrass someone just kill him with this gun like there's few feelings worse than getting killed by a guy wielding one of the most useless weapons in video game history and best of all is that this is a real gun in battlefield 5 they followed up the calibri with the just as bad liberator but there's something uh, about it that is not quite as funny as the calibri like just look at this animation when you switch to it the guy holds it like what is this as far as joke weapons go they don't get much worse and number eight is the Bane from Borderlands 2. Okay, in comparison to the Calibri, this isn't actually that bad, but what it lacks in uselessness, it makes up for by being very annoying. There's a ton of weapons in Borderlands that are basically useless, but tend to have some kind of function, even if getting a lot of use out of it is a little bit of a challenge. Few are intentionally designed to be bad, but the Bane, uh, it was, it, it's made to make you angry, I think. To get this thing, you have to play through a quest called The Bane that pops up in the sanctuary when you get far enough into the story. The quest warns you it is a cursed gun, but that's usually an empty threat in most video games. Like, also, cursed weapons are usually kind of cool. See the soul caliber? Anyway, uh, this one's not good. It has some cool weapon effects, like it's got increased damage and a huge magazine, so it can do crazy damage when used properly. The problem is that when you fire it, it just yells. <laughs> It, it just it like screeches and shouts while you are firing. And on top of that, it makes it so that you move really slowly. The slowdown makes the gun like only situational in its usefulness, but the constant yelling makes it unbelievably annoying to use. Reloading. Trying to turn down the in-game volume doesn't help either because the, the gun ignores it. You can turn off every other sound in the game and it will continue to scream at the volume that your TV is at. <laughs> I mean, you could just mute your TV or monitor or whatever, but it's still got that slowdown effect that hurts the weapon. Like, players have found ways to make this gun useful, but mostly it's just a way to have some fun. I think from the developer's perspective, more so than the player's. And number seven is the SMR from Call of Duty Black Ops 2 Zombies. People are all over the place when it comes to guns in Call of Duty. Uh, there's a few that are universally recognized as being overpowered, but for the worst gun, there's a lot more debate. Well, excluding the SMR. In multiplayer, this thing can be great, and at least according to the wiki, has the highest damage per shot of all assault rifles, but in the Zombies mode for Black Ops 2, it's one of the worst ever. There's a few reasons for this. It's already at a disadvantage being a single shot rifle in a mode where fully auto is generally 
actually significantly more effective. Uh, it's also a mystery box weapon, meaning you can get it randomly in a place of something you might actually want. And worst of all, it's not particularly accurate. The one thing a single shot rifle needs is to be accurate, and it just isn't at all. Uh, for whatever reason, aiming with this thing is basically as effective as shooting at the hit. Aim and shoot, same spot over and over, and you basically never hit where you're aiming. It's kind of ridiculous, actually. There's not a lot to say else about it. It's just incredibly bad in every way. Uh, weak, horribly inaccurate, just all around sucks in Call of Duty Zombies. Multiplayer, fine. Call of Duty Zombies, ugh. At number six is the PS20 from Deus Ex. Most of the guns in the original Deus Ex weren't great until you managed to upgrade your weapon skills. Anyone who's played the game remembers how it takes what feels like forever to aim at an enemy with a standard pistol, so weapon handling in general isn't great to start with, but the starter pistol is one of the all-time great weapons compared to this piece of junk. It's a single-use plasma weapon. You fire it once, then you discard it, so each one only gives you a shot. So in theory, that should make it probably a more powerful thing that's quite a disadvantage right uh no it's not even that strong it just basically defeats itself as a gun there's no purpose why it's not stealthy uh it makes a big explosion every time you fire it it's not powerful it's not particularly effective against anything it's just a weird single shot weapon that does a little bit of damage and that's it the one only positive thing is that it's perfectly accurate that's it that's all it has going for it so you can hit an enemy with perfect accuracy for barely any damage great thanks a lot game and number five is the clob from Goldeneye. Like, what else needs to be said about the clob? It's, it, it's called the clob. It's like they named it to sound like what it is. It's probably one of the most famous or infamous useless guns of them all. If you played Goldeneye multiplayer on the Nintendo 64, you know what we're talking about. It's named after Ken Lob because of some last minute copyright issues. And it's weak. It's, it's horribly weak. It's inaccurate. It's slow firing. It's basically worse than everything else in the game. It took the same ammo as pistols, so if you got a pistol of any kind, that pistol would have been better than this SMG. It was so useless in multiplayer, I remember most of my friends would just stick with the slappers instead of using the clob when they picked it up. they just run around and melee people, and it was more effective than trying to shoot them with this cheap crap. I mean, in, in the story mode, it stays, like, still among the worst guns, but because the enemies are completely useless themselves, it's not completely useless as a gun you can use it and not die but in multiplayer it's it's the worst thing ever you can't hit anything with it. it's just a total joke there's a reason this weapon is so infamous you can i guess actually hurt your enemies though so at least there's that and number four is the tranquilizer gun from Turok 2. Um, this thing makes the clob look good. Like, literally, it came out for the same system in the same era, and I remember thinking, <laughs> this makes the clob look good. Now, Turok 2 is well regarded for crazy weapons, most of which are very good, but it's a long list in terms of what is in the game, so there's bound to be a few stinkers, and the Trank gun is one of them. It doesn't do any damage, obviously it just knocks enemies out, which wouldn't be so bad, except that if you damage them while they're knocked out, they just wake up again. So, unless you can kill something in one shot, it's pretty pointless. On top of that, it can take multiple shots to even knock out standard enemies like dinosaurs. so, I mean, it's not helpful that the ammo is rare too. You need plenty of it, and you're not gonna find a lot. In the original release on the Nintendo 64, Ammo never dropped for this gun, uh, due to a bug, specifically, which made it even more useless. But seriously, this is Turok 2, not Metal Gear Solid. Knocking out enemies is pointless in a shooter like this, especially when it takes multiple shots and doesn't even let you shoot them while they're down. Oh, one more thing, it straight up just doesn't work on about half the enemies in the game, so why this gun exists when you can get the charged dart rifle, which pretty much does the same thing, but better in every way, we, we don't know. And number three is the Happy Bubble Blaster in Just Cause 2. Uh, what's worse than a water gun? Well, a bubble gun. Sure, we've mentioned a few guns that so far look or behave like children's toys, but this is literally a children's toy. You can find it just sitting on the table in this tower surrounded by pink trees, and as long as you know where to look, it's not too hard to find, but unlike some of the other Easter egg weapons in other Just Cause games, like the cow gun from Just Cause 4, this is totally useless. All it does is shoot little bubbles, and, and, and that's 
it. There's no secret that makes it actually useful or anything. That is what it does. The funny thing about it is that for whatever reason, civilians and authorities still act like it's a standard gun when you fire it. So people run away screaming when you stand next to them and shoot some bubbles and the army will start shooting you when you use it. So in a way, it's actually less than useless because it, it doesn't just not do anything. It can get you killed. And number two is the anti-Godoid gun from Dying Light. There's some pretty useful weapons hidden in the game, but this is not one of them. You can get the anti-Godoid gun from the Legless Spider quest, but I hope you're ready to be annoyed by one of the most annoying quests in the game. Basically, you work for this dude named David who promises to give you a good weapon if you help him out. That's easier said than done, but if you go through all the trouble of collecting the meteorite samples for him, your reward is this. It actually looks pretty sweet, like a laser weapon or something, but when you fire it, it makes some noises that attract zombies. That's it. Whole quest is basically a joke, so it's no surprise that the reward is goofy as well, but did it have to be this useless? It just piles on the badness. Frustrating, long quest, useless gun as a reward that's pretty much only good for getting you killed. You can actually upgrade it later in the following DLC, but there's a whole other Easter egg you have to solve to get the blueprint. It is possible to make a new better gun from this which is good because as it stands the anti-godoid gun is one of the most useless weapons of all time and finally everything in the first episode of daikatana when the infamous ad said john romero is about to make you his bitch this is what they meant only a truly hateful spiteful designer would be mad enough to put in this many useless annoying and frustrating guns in one game and it's kind of impressive how terrible the weapon roster is and is a crowning achievement in badness the weird thing is daikatana is a game of multiple time periods split into different episodes each one a different section and a different selection of weapons most of them are never great the worst are found in the first episode by far you know the one that's supposed to introduce you to the game most games like to easy and gently daikatana doesn't do that instead it dumps you into a pea green swamp of misery filled with some of the most annoying enemies you will ever fight in an fps and to deal with all of this they give you an entire collection of terrible weapons to use the starter pistol the ion blaster has shots that bounce off walls and they're usually coming back to hit you in the face there's also the mind thrower which has an an effective range about as big as its explosive radius meaning you're gonna get hit by your own explosions the rocket launcher fires two rockets that spin around so a lot of the time the giant hitbox slam in the environment and damage you even the super weapon the shockwave fires a stupid bouncing ball that often bounces back at you most of your arsenal from the first episode of the game has super weird hitbox to crazy bounce physics or just is all around annoying to use and they're often more likely to kill you than the enemies so it's very very up upsetting and infuriating. The only gun that can't kill you by accident is a shotgun, and even that has the stupid drawback of firing six shots at a time and having that really annoying knockback. These guns are a big reason why Daikatana is considered to be so legendarily bad. Uh, they're just annoying to use. Most of the guns are worse than useless and will get you killed. Your own weapons are more dangerous to you than most of the enemies in the starting levels. It's completely nuts. And that's all for today. Leave us a comment. Let us know what you think. If you like this video, click like. If you're not subscribe now is a great time to do so we upload brand new videos every day of the week best way to see them first is of course a subscription so click subscribe don't forget to enable all notifications and as always we thank you very much for watching this video i'm falcon you can follow me on twitter falcon the hero we'll see you next time right here on game ranks